Hello class, let's talk about keeping track of prices. There are two ways that we keep track of prices in our economy. First is the Consumer Price Index, called CPI for short. And the second is the GDP Deflator Index. Both of them are valid ways to measure inflation in the U.S. economy from year to year. There are some key differences in how we calculate them, however. For example, for the CPI, we measure price changes in goods and services purchased out of pocket by urban consumers. Whereas for the GDP price index, we measure price changes in goods and services purchased by consumers, businesses, the government, and foreigners. So depending on the type of analysis that you want to make, you are going to make a decision on which one to use. When we look at the following graph, we notice that the CPI and the GDP deflator start to diverge around 1991-1992. This is due to the type of data that we use to calculate each one of these indexes. However, even though these two graphs are diverging, meaning they are separating, when we start calculating inflation as a measure, we will see how it doesn't matter which method we use, the results will be the same. This graph shows us something a little bit different. What we have done is we have modified the data from the graph before and changed it into percent change from year to year. This is what we call measuring inflation. Notice that the CPI is in blue and the GDP deflator is in red. Most of the time, these two measures are very close to each other. In some instances, they are exactly the same. This is what we were talking about in the previous graph, that it doesn't matter which method you use to calculate price changes. When you are measuring inflation, these numbers are going to be basically the same. Let's take some time now to go over some examples that show this exact principle. You will notice that the data for the GDP deflator and CPI are quite different. However, when we start calculating inflation, you will see how, how these two columns are related. Let's take 2004 to 2005. Let's quickly calculate the percent change from 96.8 to 100 on the GDP deflator index. For this, we use a simple percent change formula. This is our percent change formula. If we put this into a calculator, we would get 3.3%. About this means that from 2004 to 2005, prices increased by 3.3%. This is our measure of inflation. We can do something similar from 2005 to 2006. However, since we have the base year, which is 2005, we don't need to do the percent change formula. How do I know the base year is 2005? Because it has 100 as its index number. Whenever you see this, you know that that year is the base year. So in this case, we just have to subtract 103.3 from 100 to figure out our inflation. 
So, as it turns out, the inflation rate from 2005 to 2006 is the same as the previous year, 3.3%. Remember, you can only do this subtraction method when you are comparing to the base year. Notice that we did something different for the year before. Now, we can make the same type of calculations with the CPI data. So, as we will show, it doesn't matter which data you use, the inflation rates will be about the same. Let's start with 2004 and 2005. Let's plug them in into our percent change formula. This will give us 3.4% inflation rate. Notice, we are not far off from the other calculations. And if we do the same thing for 2005 and 2006, we get a 3.2. Again, we are not that far off from the calculations we had with the GDP deflator data. So, in summary, it doesn't matter which type of data you use. GDP deflator or CPI, your inflation rates should be the same or somewhere around each other. As we see here, for, to, for the GDP deflator data, for the first year we have a 3.3 and for the CPI data we have a 3.4. And then for the second year we have a 3.3 and for the 